Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. Welcome back to another video. And today we're talking about the dreaded rollover ground ball. And I think it's important to note that sometimes you're gonna hit ground balls, right? Sometimes you're just gonna miss. You're gonna get on top of the baseball. Sometimes it happens. But today we're talking about when you develop sort of a routine of consistently hitting those dreaded rollover ground balls to your pull side, where you get on top of it, maybe around it a little bit, have that top spin. We're gonna talk about why rollover ground balls happen in the first place, and more importantly, how you can correct the issue moving forward. So I really think you're gonna enjoy this video. Without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so if you're rolling over, the first thing that you should check is to make sure that you have a solid grip. And I know it sounds elementary, but having an improper grip, a poor grip, could actually be causing your rollovers. And so I think that instead of immediately going to the more complex issues, let's start out with the very elementary things and ensure that you have a solid grip, okay? Now with grip, typically there's two schools of thought with grip, right? You've probably heard both of them. The first school of thought is aligning your door knocking knuckles. Right, So if you were going to go to your next door neighbor and ask for a cup of sugar or something like that, the, the knuckles that you would use to knock on the door, right, typically it's been taught to align those knuckles in your grip and that's a pretty good grip. And there's nothing wrong with that grip if it's comfortable for you. To me it feels like a little bit like I'm hyper aligned with this particular grip. So another grip that's commonly taught is the box grip and what that is, for a right handed hitter, you would align your door knocking knuckles, okay, so my right hand, my door knocking knuckles on my right hand with my secondary knuckles on my left hand forming more of a box. Now this grip is what I want you to just be careful of, okay? Uh, because if you open up with this grip here, it's very easy for um, you know the, the, the barrel or the handle of the bat rather to get deep into your hand, into your palm here. We wanna avoid allowing the handle of your bat to get down here in your palm, okay? So if you're going to use the box grip, just make sure that you're holding the bat out in your fingertips, but it's tough to do that with this particular grip. So I would actually recommend splitting the difference between that box grip right and then the traditional aligning your door knocking knuckles i think that if you just split the difference there um, so my my door knocking knuckles on my top hand are kind of in the middle of my door knocking knuckles and my secondary knuckles on my bottom hand if you do that it's easier to hold the bat more out in your fingertips where you're going to have more bat control right and you're also going to be able to uh, get to a palm up, palm down position a little bit easier at the point of contact. So that's the first thing. Check to make sure that your grip is not what's causing your rollovers, okay? And a great way to test this is to just get into your stance and go through your swing in slow motion. Now, I'm gonna use the box grip here, so I'm gonna kinda over-exaggerate it, almost like I'm wrapping the bat here a little bit, okay? And what I would notice is I would get to the point of contact, I'd make contact here. What we want is we wanna get to a really good extent extension position well after the point of contact we want to drive through and get to a position with our arms kind of straight out like this right we don't want to cut ourselves off but what you'll notice if your grip is what's causing your rollovers is maybe at the point of contact you look good but right after the point of contact you really struggle to get to this position here and instead you get to more of a position like this right where your bat is coming off plane with the pitch pretty easily and that is how the rollover actually happens if it's your grip right as you can see if my timing is not spot on if my timing's perfect that's fine but if my timing's not spot on if I'm a little bit early right so instead of making contact here if I make contact out here my barrel might already be rolling like this and I might hit the top of that ball and produce a rollover so that's the first thing make sure that you check your grip Let's get into the next reason why you might be rolling over, and that is if you have the mentality of you're trying to get on top of the baseball. And I know a lot of us have been taught this throughout our playing career, right? We've had coaches tell us, get on top, get on top, hit the top half of the baseball. That's what produces backspin. And it's really not what actually happens, right? And it's kind of double trouble uh, because if you think about it, right, the pitch is coming in at a downward angle from the pitcher 
right? We can all agree the pitch is coming in at a downward angle from the pitcher. And if we're also, and I'm over exaggerating here, but if we're also trying to get on top of the baseball, right? That's double trouble because the ball's already coming down. We're swinging down. If the ball's coming down and we're also swinging down, if we're lucky enough to have good enough time to even make contact with that pitch, where is that ball most likely gonna go? Is it gonna go up? Well, if it does go up, it's gonna be a pop-up to the catcher most likely, right? Because the ball's already coming down, we're taking such a steep angle down, right? So that's not gonna work. And even if our timing is perfect, right? Where is that ball gonna go if our bat is coming in on a downward trajectory and so is the pitch? It's gonna be a ground ball, right? A lot of times it's gonna be a rollover topspin ground ball to the shortstop if you are a right-handed hitter, okay? And so instead of having the mentality of you're trying to get on top of the ball, I think the best thing you can do is, I mean, it really makes sense, try to maximize um, the amount of time that your bat is on plane with the pitch. And what would on plane with the pitch be? Well, the pitch is not coming in at an upward angle, right? That's for sure. And it's also not coming exactly at a flat angle, right? Even you, you see something, the speed of a bullet, right? A bullet over a, a, a a length of time, right, and over a certain distance, a bullet does not just go flat. It goes relatively flat, but it's dropping, right? The further that it goes, the more that it drops. A baseball is the same way. So a baseball is coming in at a downward trajectory, right? And so the way that we maximize our chances of success and we provide the most room for air in our timing is we match the plane of the pitch for as long as we can. Okay, so if the pitch is coming in at a downward angle, don't try to get on top. Try to get your bat on plane with the pitch as early as you can so you don't have to be perfect with your timing. And then once you make contact with the ball, that's why you don't want to, as we talked about grip earlier, that's why we don't want to, you know, immediately pull our bat off plane with the pitch. We want to maximize our chances of hitting the ball here, but even if our timing's off, we can still hit it here, 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 right? But don't try to get on top. Try to actually be on plane with the pitch for as long as you can. The next reason why you might be rolling over, and this is the perfect angle for you to see this at, is an around the ball bat path, okay? So what I mean by an around the ball bat path is instead of keeping everything in tight to our body like this, and making contact, we just talked about being on plane with the pitch, right? Making contact with the baseball slightly below the equator, not right in the middle, just ever so slightly below that equator and hitting the inside part of the baseball, right? That's what we wanna do. What we wanna avoid is instead of focusing on hitting that inside part of the baseball slightly below the equator, if we allow our body to get disconnected, if we allow our arms to make their first move out here like this, where there's space in between here, my arms are out here like this, that's gonna cause an around the ball bat path because if this is my first move here, when my barrel finally comes around, it's not coming from the inside of the baseball like this. You've heard coaches say, stay inside it, stay inside it, right? We're not coming from the inside here. If our bat's out here like this, we're coming from the outside. So our bat is traveling around the baseball like this and even worse, our brain is gonna tell us at this point, the only way I can hit this baseball is to flip my wrist over like this. And if you're at this position at the point of contact, you're hitting the outside part of the ball, you're hitting the top half of the ball, and your wrists are already prematurely rolling. What is that gonna lead to? That's gonna lead to obviously a rollover ground ball, right? So instead, instead of taking that around the ball bat path, what should you focus on? If you see yourself, and it's great to take some video of your swing, I always recommend that so you can see what's actually going on, right? But if you see that your first move, you know, you get to your launch position when your front foot hits the ground and your first move is out like this, kind of like casting your hands, getting out here like this, well then you have an around the ball bat path. Easiest way to fix it, number one, think about hitting the inside part. Think about stay inside, stay inside the baseball. I'm not telling you you have to hit everything to the opposite field. Stay inside the baseball. Even on an inside pitch, we're staying inside the baseball, right? So no matter where the pitch is, stay inside it. And then also think about staying connected, okay? So I just talked about how if we allow our hands to get out here like this, this is disconnected, right? Just tell yourself, stay connected, stay connected. You want everything in tight to your body throughout your entire swing, even at the point of contact. We don't wanna be out here like this at the point of contact, do we? We don't want extension at the point of contact. You look at any big leaguer at the point of contact 
and they're in here connected. On an away pitch, you're not gonna be as connected, right? But no matter where the pitch is, try to stay as connected as you can. So stay connected, stay inside it. That's gonna help you with that around the ball bat path that causes the rollovers. And the last thing I wanna talk about in today's video, the last common reason why a lot of players roll over is poor extension. They're cutting themselves off instead of really driving through the ball and getting to a nice extension position. Okay, so I wanna demonstrate what I mean by that. And I've already touched on it a little bit in this video, but if you get to the point of contact, right? I make contact here, I hit the baseball here. And instead of getting to a position where your arms, you drive through the ball and your arms are out here like this, if you get to a position where you cut your swing off, right, your wrists are starting to roll right here immediately after contact and you cut your swing off, that's poor extension. Okay, so you want to work on getting not poor extension, good extension, because this type of swing, if we start getting rolly with our wrists here, right? This type of swing is gonna produce a lot of rollover ground balls because our timing's not gonna be perfect every single pitch. So the question becomes, if extension's important, how do we get good extension? I think the biggest thing you need to think about mentally is driving through the baseball. Drive through the baseball, hammer the baseball, drive through it, you know? Don't get to the point of contact and stop here. You wanna accelerate, drive through the baseball. I've also talked about, you know, acting like you've got a pizza on your hand and you're throwing it into the oven. That's another great thing to think about. But really what I want you to wrap your mind around is extension is pretty much a byproduct of everything else in your swing. So if you do the other things we talked about, if you have a solid grip, right, if you get to a really good launch position, if you stay inside the baseball instead of having that around the ball bat path, if you're trying to match the plane of the pitch, not trying to swing down, if you do all of those things, right, especially staying connected in here like this, it's gonna be so much easier for you to get to a good extension position automatically. But if you wipe away all those other things, you know, if you have an around the ball bat path so you're disconnected, you're also trying to get on top and swing down, right? Well, then you're not gonna have a good extension position because your bat's coming at a downward plane. You're gonna roll your wrist. You're gonna finish down here low like this. We never wanna finish low. We always wanna finish our swing no matter where the pitch is, even on a high pitch. We always wanna finish our swing high. And you'll notice that the lower the pitch is, last thing I'll mention here, the lower the pitch is, the higher we're actually gonna finish our swing. So I hope that helps. So that's it, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And really quickly, if you enjoyed it, there's two quick things that I would like you to do. First of all, subscribe to our channel if you're not already. Join the UBT family. We're coming out with new baseball videos every single week and I don't want you to miss any of them because they're gonna get you better, okay? So subscribe. And then the second thing, if you haven't done so already, go check out our free on-demand hitting training. If you found this video helpful, this quick little YouTube video, I know you're gonna find that training to be very, very helpful and it's 100% free. All you have to do is go to improvemyhitting.com. That's improvemyhitting.com, or you're gonna see in the comment section, that first comment from Ultimate Baseball Training, you'll see that pinned comment, and I'll leave the link there for you, so you can just click on that link, and then that'll take you to a page where you can go watch your free on-demand hitting training. So do those two things, subscribe, go watch your training. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you next time.